All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is something that we have been talking about for some time, that is it possible that we can look at the vaccines and their uh, comparison in their efficacy and their side effects. So uh, I thought that we will go over these together. This is the same data as from the trials. So I'm just going to start my... Um, so this is the trial result data. This is not from the production or not from the field. And that data is different. I do not have the collection of that data at this time. So here we have, this is the uh, Pfizer-BioNTech trial result. We have gone over this in detail in the past. I have just put them together for comparison sake. Then here is another. Uh, this is also FDA briefing document for Moderna. And this one is the FDA briefing document for Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccine. So with this, I have collected those data points here in an Excel sheet, and I have illustrated them. So let's start. So the first thing here, vaccine comparison. So please, when you're reading this one, wherever I have placed a Z, or Z as in uh, some countries, that is for day, dose. And wherever I have a D, that is for day. So here is how their comparison is. So we have Pfizer, BioNTech, we have Moderna and Janssen. Characteristics of these, Pfizer, BioNTech, we know it is a messenger RNA vaccine. Moderna is a messenger RNA vaccine. Janssen is an adenovirus based vaccine. Pfizer is 30 microgram per dose or 0 0.3 milliliter in one dose. So 30 microgram is the actual um, messenger RNA particle and 0 0.3 milliliter is the total dose. Similarly, on Moderna side, 100 microgram per dose and 0 0.5 milliliter. The Janssen is five multiplied by 10 raised to power 10 number of virus particles. Pfizer wants two doses. We know that Moderna wants two doses and Johnson & Johnson is one dose. Pfizer says we become fully protective after the seven days of the second dose and their doses are separated, I believe, by 21 days. Moderna says 14 days after the second dose and their doses are separated by one month. And Janssen & Janssen says better protection after 28 days. In the trials, we had 43,000, 30,000, and 40,000 people. So let's see them compared to each other. Overall efficacy. So the overall efficacy was, in case of Pfizer, 94.6%, seven days after the second dose, 94.6%. Moderna 94.5%, 14 days after the second dose. And Johnson & Johnson, because they don't have two doses, their way of uh, uh, reporting was 66.9%, that is 14 days after the second dose, or up till the 14 days, and then 66.1% efficacy after the 28 days of the only one dose that they give. So that is a basic comparison. So how do we see it? 94.6% versus 94.5% versus 66.1%. That is the overall efficacy. Now, in case of Pfizer and Moderna, there is something additional as well. And that is this. In case of Pfizer, so this first one is Pfizer, 52.1, efficacy between the dose one and two. So many folks ask that, hey, what is the protection? So between dose one and two, 52% efficacy. In case of Moderna, from the dose one and up till the 14 days, 50.8% efficacy. And then up till the second dose, but after the 14 days, 92.1% efficacy, which is pretty close to the efficacy even after these 14 days of the second dose. So some folks who have been thinking that, hey, what would happen after the one dose only? So if it is Moderna, one dose only, they say that till the second dose, there is 
92.1% uh, efficacy. Severe to critical. In case of Pfizer, between the two doses, 52.4% protection from becoming severe to critical. After dose one, 82% protection. And after dose two, seven days after dose two, this is the complete protection, 75%. From severe to critical, please remember this is not the overall, this is from severe to critical. In case of Moderna, 100% after dose one, but they did not write how many days. Is it 20 days after dose one or 25 days? But of course, it is going to be lesser than 28 days because the second dose is within a month. 100% after dose two, and that is again 14 days after the dose two. 42.6% if only one dose is given and the second dose is not given, but they do not have enough data. So what is the takeaway over here? Uh, let's look at the J Janssen as well. Janssen has 14 days after their dose, 76.6%, and 28 days after the dose, 85%. So what are they saying, all of them? They are saying that I'm going to look at their completion, 75%, 100%, and 85% is their protection from severe to critical infection. Then COVID-related death. So this is what I wanted to understand that did they report any of them, any clotting issues or clotting-related death that they kind of uh, recategorized in something else. So in case of Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, I did not see any such thing reported, but I want to read a statement from Johnson & Johnson that is interesting. And then uh, on Pfizer side as well, they did not report anything, but they said there were two deaths in the vaccine group, not related to vaccine. However, one of the deaths occurred within the three days of the vaccination, and that was after arteriosclerosis. So to me, that seems a little doubtful. But anyways, they said this does not look like the uh, this has nothing to do with the vaccine. So I wanted to read the Janssen and Janssen's. So just one second. I want to see what is the page. So page number is 54. So if I go here and go to the page number 54, <clears throat> This is Johnson & Johnson. So on their page 54, they say, pharmacovigilance activities, pharmacovigilance. Janssen submitted a pharmacovigilance plan to monitor safety concerns that could be associated with Janssen COVID-19 vaccine, the sponsor identified, so sponsor identified the company, vaccine-associated enhanced disease, so possibility of ADE, including vaccine-associated enhanced respiratory disease. So let me not call it ADE, but they thought that vaccine-related disease is possible. Anaphylactic reaction, including anaphylaxis itself, and thrombo, thrombo uh, thromboembolic events as important potential risks. So in their uh, paper, the same paper, they actually don't say that we observed it, but they presented that as something to keep in mind that this could happen. And it is possible that they are saying this because they have a traditional vaccine made up of adenovirus or not really traditional, but a vaccine which has been out in uh, the field for some time. So maybe they have observed something. So this is an interesting uh, note from Johnson & Johnson. Now looking at the efficacy, sorry, adverse effects. So that was the efficacy. Adverse effects. So Pfizer-BioNTech, Pfizer-BioNTech clotting, they have not reported any in trial. Moderna. They did not report any in trial. So I'm saying in trial, 
in the field now that the vaccinations are happening the situation may be different and we can look at the worst but this is what was reported jansen johnson and johnson they reported 15 clotting events in vaccinated folks compared to 10 clotting events in non vaccinated or placebo so this is what they said so if you see here um, so if we go here to the clotting 15 cases so that is on page number seven so if we go to their page seven here <clears throat> A numerical imbalance was seen in non-serious urticaria events. And then similarly down here, they say numerical imbalances were observed between vaccine and placebo recipients for thromboembolic events, 15 versus 10 and tinnitus, 6 versus 0. So let's just continue to look at it here. So Johnson & Johnson said that, hey, we did observe something 15 versus 10. So there is a numerical imbalance towards the vaccine may be causing this. Tinnitus. So Pfizer said no evidence of tinnitus during the, um, during the trial. However, today, actually, yesterday, a cool bean who's a nurse practitioner had sent me a message saying that I took Pfizer on Jan second dose was January middle. And since then, he has tinnitus. And he was thinking that hopefully it would resolve. And hopefully it would resolve. So they did not, in the trial, this was not reported, but I think there are people who are experiencing it. Moderna said no tinnitus. Johnson & Johnson said six tinnitus cases in vaccinated versus zero in placebo, and one case in vaccinated was unresolved. Bell's palsy, Pfizer, four. Moderna, three to one, and Johnson & Johnson, two to two two in placebo and two in the, the vaccination. Anaphylaxis, zero in Pfizer. Observed now maybe in the field, but in the trial, zero. Moderna in the trial, zero. And Johnson & Johnson in the trial, zero. And I think in the field as well, we haven't seen any, maybe because the count is low. Allergies. So they all report some allergies that may be. But these are not anaphylaxis. But these may be some allergic, for example, a rash or urticaria or some other allergic reaction, but not rising up to the anaphylaxis. Local reactions, so that is pain at the site of injection or bleeding or rash or discomfort. So these are just natural, I think, understandable. In case of Pfizer, 78%. In case of Moderna, 84%. In case of uh, Johnson & Johnson, urticaria, 5 to 1. And systemic reactions, systemic reactions, for example, fever, myalgia, fatigue, and so on. So 59% in case of Pfizer, 54% in case of Moderna. And these two lines, the first line is for the dose one, second line is for the dose two. And Johnson & Johnson, because that was just dose one, they have not shown any. And then if you see here, in both in case of Pfizer and Moderna, in second dose, the systemic reaction becomes a little more aggravated. So the only one concern in the trial data that I saw was in case of Pfizer that they had the um, one death which had arteriosclerosis, although they came back and they said this was not related to the vaccine. So what is missing in this discussion is the situation in the field. With this, I'm going to stop here. And once again, I'll put my position out there, and that is very simple. I am pro-vaccine. I will get the vaccine. I am actually now due for the vaccine. So hopefully in another few days, I would have my vaccine as well. So um, let's do this. I'm going to hang up, and then we can do a little chit-chat after this. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And there are some links in the description if you would like to uh, support this work. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.